Heritage United Church for another Sunday. It's, I can't believe how fast the season has gone. Thanksgiving is over, and we are coming into the last two months of the year. We are welcoming all of those who are with us live today, and of course, our YouTube channel, which is on our website. People can join us, so members of the church and also visitors who want to do that. I had a look at the website and the YouTubes, and a lot of people are actually doing that, so we're pleased to be able to bring this message to you. So, first of all, um, you'll notice that the words today will be on the screen, so uh, you'll be able to follow uh, with the service as well. So, please come join me with the call to worship this morning. In the quiet of this space, we heard God's gentle calling. We come with open hearts, ready to answer God's call. In the stories of the scripture, we find God's timely, timeless invitation. With hands and hearts extended, we welcome the invitation to worship. Come, let us worship. Okay, so beginning, please stand as you are able, and we're going to sing him from more voices. Number 48, I can feel you near me, God. Thank you. 
And if you should be, if you're not receiving this online, let us know of that too. You should be receiving that every week. And a lot of information is in there already. And the orders need to be in by November the 2nd, and the chocolates will arrive on December the 3rd for that. And Carol, you're the organizer for that. Let's see if that's right. I think it's not in the section of the when we can take orders. November the 12th is what? 12th is up there. Is what we have. Oh, just at the second. Okay, yeah, that's better. Yeah, in December the 3rd, we can see. And are there any other announcements that we want to mention? Uh, did you have anything else? Yeah. I bet we do have uh, one little piece of information that Rob and Anna, um, they were not here for um, Lori's going away party. So they went to the service last week and they're just going to comment about the service that they attended last week at Lori's new church. Yeah, it was a very nice service. Um, I was here for Lord's Laughing, but Anastasia and Victoria and Natalie were not. Um, I hadn't been to the Donway maybe 12, 14 years ago. I had a cousin that passed away. We had a service there. It, it's quite a large uh, sanctuary. Um, I think they're undergoing some renovations there as well, or will be. Uh, you know, Lori looked right at home, I guess, just, you know, in her element, uh, very happy that she was, you know, in the congregation where she grew up. There were some nice folks there that had some nice things to say about her back in the day. Uh, she commented on, on her time here just in, in a general way, and, and uh, you know, we're moving on, we're moving in a new direction, but, uh, you know, she seemed very happy. There, there was probably 50-ish people there. Yeah. Um, one thing that uh, Lori's mom said, oh yeah, no, Rob, there's coffee downstairs, but we don't do sweets the way we do them here. <laughs> so, I was disappointed to hear that. <laughs> but it was, it was a nice time, and Lori really appreciated us coming, and, and she says, obviously, hello, and we're welcome to go anytime. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And um, are there any people who are not included on the list for prayers?
on your phone, or on your computer, <laughs> or in the newspaper. Oh, yeah. Might as well kind of put all of them out there. I am addicted. <laughs> Come before you now. So I'm addicted to this one game on my phone, and it's called Wordscapes. Does anybody know it? Wordscapes. It's a jumble of letters, and you have to try and make as many words as possible out of the letters that are given to you. And there, it's like a race against the clock, right? So you've only got so many, and then there's points that are given depending on how complex the word is or not. And I came across one that totally stumped me. All I got were like the little itty bitty words, barely any points. Boy, I was disappointing. It's disappointing. So I thought I would enlist some help today. <laughs> and I'm going to hand them out and hoping that you can help me. One from you. And they're all the same. I'm not giving everybody a different friends. I can't do these. Ah, sure. That would be great. I'll do up here if you want to go together. Thank you.
to some things. And I want you to think as we go through today's service. What are some of the barriers we have as Heritage United Church or as the United Church of Canada to being inclusive, to ensuring that everyone has an opportunity to participate? Big questions. Thank you for participating with me. <laughs> Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. And my neighbor. And my neighbor. And my friends and family. And my friends and family. And people I don't know. And people I don't know. As you are here for me. I am here for you. Call upon me and I will come. Call upon me and I will come. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Open our hearts and minds, O oh God, to receive your word. Grant us the grace to respond with a heart willing to obey and a spirit eager to serve, and a love that overflows to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite Brian up to read our first scripture this morning from Isaiah. Good morning. I'm uh, reading from Isaiah 25, 1 to 9. The praise for deliverance from oppression. <clears throat> o Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. For you have made the city a heap, for the fortified city a ruin. The palace of foreigners is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat, when the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of foreigners like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines straight clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe, wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his peoples. He will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he may save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This ends reading.
perhaps the other wedding feast that we hear of, that Jesus is present at, where he makes water into wine, this one has a very different undercurrent to it. I'm reading chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call all those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent others, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it. He went away, one to his farm, another to his business, and while the rest seized his servants and mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those invited weren't worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. And so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed there was a man who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he was speechless. And the king said to the attendants, bind him, hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here ended the reading. Praise be to God. Uh, let's go into our hymn next hymn. My apologies. Voices United, number 286, if you will trust in God to guide you.
special invitation that made you feel truly valued and included? Receiving an invitation is like, it's like holding a small, well-crafted package. It just kind of hints at some excitement that might be inside. The paper is, well, it's more often of a, of a higher quality, and it has this smooth, almost luxurious feel to it. You know, that just by running your hand over it that there's an exciting event on the horizon. The weight and thickness make you feel like you're really holding something special. Imagine the scenario. You go to the mailbox on Wednesday afternoon and see that there is an envelope addressed to you. It's in an eloquent script font. You know, it's as if somebody's really taken the time and care to be precise in how not only it's addressed, but how it looks and feels. You take the envelope inside and you carefully, you know, tear back that back flap so that you don't damage the whole envelope. You sit down in a comfortable chair or maybe at the kitchen table, and you pull, you slip that card just out of the envelope. Paper's just off-white. Very classic. Gold script lettering. And as you run your hand over the paper, again, you feel that texture. It's not really, not really smooth, but it's not really rough either. It just feels good. And then the moment of revelation. It's an invitation. Oh, this is exciting, isn't it? The language of the invitation is clear, and you know exactly when and where the event is going to take place. You check the date on the back, and you look at your calendar. I'm available. I'm going to go. The invitation is really clear about the event itself. It's not ordinary. The event and the effort put into the invitation, well, it just speaks to how important it is. And the invitation is the gateway to being part of this special occasion. We know that invitations, if you've received one in the mail, they typically include other details, right? How to get there, maybe some attire, what kind of attire, whether it's formal or informal, casual, and RSVP instructions. And the RSVP is really important because it helps the host kind of tell you how many people are going to be coming so they can make sure enough food is available, right? Receiving an invitation is like being handed the keys to a, a memorable experience. It's a roadmap to an event that somebody really wants you to be at. But let's take a step further back in our reflection today, and I'd like to draw your attention to that contrast that I mentioned earlier. And it's a contrast that can be found in two very distinctive banquets. They're occurring simultaneously. On the one side, there's this lavish banquet that's described in Matthew's Gospel, and it's a scene of opulence, an extravagant gathering by a king who spares no expense and invites the elite, the privileged, from all the land to attend. The atmosphere itself is just filled with grandeur. A king is adorned in exquisite attire, and the feast, oh, it's laid out for the guests. Boy, it looks sumptuous. Well, the people you've invited, or the king has invited, decide not to show. Have you ever had a no-show at an event that you held? Mm -hmm. They ignore the invitation. They scoff at it. And the king is enraged. He sends his servants to those who are invited, and in turn, the servants are mistreated and killed. Then the king says, 
Well, if the people aren't going to come that I invite, go out into the streets and invite some other people just in. I've paid all this money for the event, for the food, the musicians. I've got to get my money's worth, right? People literally came in off the streets to join the occasion. And yet in the midst of this grandeur, there's a guest who stands out for all the wrong reasons to the king. This guest, though invited, not dressed properly for a wedding, is wearing scruffy, stained garments that are a stark contrast to the opulence of this event. The king, perturbed, inquires and says, friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, your wedding robes? It's as if this guest had chosen to ignore the significance of this event that the king put on. And to the king, this illustrated really how self-centered this person was, how arrogant the guest was, forgetting that they were just pulled in off the street. The king was upset not only with this man and threw him out, but also with others that had disrespected him. And verse 14 says, Though for many are called, but few are chosen. Few were sent an invitation. The king originally had a short guest list. Well, as far as king's invitation lists go, I suppose. One that would please him and one that would make him envied. When he opened up the invitation to all, he became displeased with the people who actually showed up for the event. He found fault in them rather than being pleased that there were people there enjoying themselves, gathered together in community for a celebration. That was the first banquet. The second banquet, as we shift our attention to the other side, is where we find a very divine banquet, a vision that's described in Isaiah. And it's a beautiful passage of both hope and promise. In this vision, Isaiah envisions a future time when God's kingdom will be fully established. It's a picture of joy and celebration of divine feast where people from all nations are welcomed. The language of Isaiah paints a very beautiful picture. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, and of well-aged wines, strained clear. Could these banquets be any more different from one another? In Matthew's banquet, the kingdom is an extravagant gathering with a select guest list, but in Isaiah's vision, we see the kingdom of God. A place where the Lord prepares a feast, not for the elite, not for the privileged, but for all people. There are no exclusions, no VIP lists, and no judgments based on what you happen to be wearing that day. In this divine banquet, the invitation is universal. It is extended to every corner of the world. People from all backgrounds, regardless of their past, are welcomed. And those who come are not judged by what they wear or their status, but by the openness of their hearts to respond to RSVP, to God's invitation. In this future kingdom, God will wipe away every tear, remove suffering, and put an end to death. It's a time of great rejoicing for Israelites who had been out in the wilderness. And this is where we'll experience the fullness of God's love and grace. This passage reminds us that no matter the challenges that we face now, that we hear of on the news, that we experience in our own lives, a glorious future ahead and will enjoy a blessed and eternal relationship with God. Isaiah's vision is one of both comfort and hope because it's a reminder 
of the all-encompassing love of God and the promise of a future where joy and peace will reign. It will be the norm. It's a reminder that we are all beloved. We are all invited to attend this feast by God and with God. And it's a reminder to trust in God's plan. Boy, is it really hard to trust in God's plan some days, isn't it? I think so. I think there's days that I really struggle with it. Because I want to be in control. I want it to go according to my plan. But God has more in store for us. And the two scriptures today share imagery of these two banquets and help us understand the differences about the values of this world that we live in, where pride and prestige and influence play such a big part of our lives, versus the values of God's kingdom, where we are all called to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and to care for the sick. It's a different kind of banquet and feast. So let's go back to the beginning. Have you ever received a special invitation that made you feel truly valued and included? Receiving an invitation is like holding a small, well, maybe not so small, well-crafted package that just hints at the treasure that it contains. Paper is used as often of a higher quality. And it has this smooth, almost luxurious feel to the paper. The weight and thickness <coughs> remind you that you're holding to something really special. What does it mean? RSVP to God's call in your life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you call each of us throughout our lives to prepare for the feast and the banquet to come. Give us strength to resist the things that make us better to other people and enable us to only look to Jesus to show us the better way. Amen.
and serve, and to love not just with our words, but through our actions and our resources. Through our generosity, we have the opportunity to be a blessing to others through our ministry here at Heritage United Church. Our morning gifts and offering will now be received. And as it is brought forward, let us sing together, Voices United, number 236, Now Thank We All Our God.
for Susie, for Lana and Cheryl. We pray for Ron and Lena, Carol. We pray for Wayne and for Bill. Be with them in this time of challenge and struggle. Wrap your loving arms around them and give them strength. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. As we navigate the challenges and uncertainties of our world, we ask for the strength and resilience to continue spreading your love and goodness. We place our trust in you, O God, and believe in the power of prayer to bring about positive change in our world. We offer these prayers with hopeful hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as we pray together now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is from More Voices. It's number 424. May the God of hope go with us. Voices United. Uh, sorry, what did I say? More Voices? Yeah, voices. Sorry. Voices United. Yeah. 424. Thank you. <laughs>